All right, finally reaching past the first hundred chapters of One Piece. I'm glad to see that we're in the Grand Line. There is no turning back now. We got the Calm Belt, which just stops people from leaving or entering the Grand Line. It has no wind to set sail, and it has monsters, which are, like, strangely beautiful and, like, very Lovecraftian in scale. The weather itself just changes drastically. Like, we get to go from, like, a hot day to winter in the span of a few seconds, which I appreciate because the cover for Arlong Park showed it snowing, and I thought that that place was going to be snowy, and I was kind of sad that it wasn't. But now we got snow, and I'm glad to see that we have a lot more lighthearted moments here as we just see the crew making snow people and throwing snowballs around. And it all just feels very nice and very casual before finally reaching Whiskey Peaks, which has like cactus mountains. I legitimately didn't notice that until I started reviewing this and my brain just like ignored these green hills, these like lumps here on the side. My brain was just like, oh, you know, those are green spots in the background, not giant cactuses, cacti, giant cacti. And they got like graves. These tiny little cacti spikes got like actual graves on them. Okay, uh, whatever. Uh, Whiskey Peaks welcomes pirates to the Grand Line. They all come in, they have a good drink, and then they party, and then the pirates black out, and then they get robbed. Because guess what? It was all a ruse. Whiskey Peaks is a lie. And this organization, Baroque Works, is all about crime. It's a crime organization. And they got weird names like Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday because they're all fake names. And they just lure people over to Whiskey Peaks and then they rob them blind. And they see that Luffy has this like big bounty on him. And so they have to capture him alive because, and I quote, if we kill them, their value drops by 30%. What? I just, I don't understand. Move it on. Zoro finds out about their plan. They weren't fooled, which I really like because they're smart. They're a bounty hunter. Zoro themselves were once offered to be a part of Baroque's works. They declined because, as he says, that's pretty cringe. And then he just takes everyone out in Baroque's works, like relatively easily too. Like sure, they get slapped around every once in a while, but they handled it really well. Until Mr. Five and Miss Valentine show up, two new fruit users, one of which has the ability to gain and lose weight, and the other has the ability to uh, pick explosives out of their nose. Look, sometimes you just got a fruit ability that isn't as cool as others, all right? Pick and flick just got like a, <laughs> pick and flick just got like a bad draw. But they're not here to fight Zoro, they're here to fight Miss Valentine, also known as Vivi, because she is a royal from Alabasta. What is a royal doing in Baroque works? What is a royal doing hunting down a precious submarine whale? I don't know, we're just gonna roll with it. I have a ton of thoughts on that, but I'm just gonna put them like in a big pile and we're gonna like stick a pin in that and we'll talk about it once we finish the saga. Deal? Deal. Alabasta is this place further along the Grand Line, which is very interesting to know because that means Vivi traveled backwards somehow. And Alabasta is in this big conflict, so it's super risky for her, which is why the crew offers to take her for a hefty, hefty price. I love it. If you're going to do something, you might as well make money in the process. And I love Nami here. She's just like really guilt tripping everyone who is asking for help, wanting a higher payout. But that also means that now we have created enemies with Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, as well as the rest of Baroque Works. They are literally now unwanted posters, in part because they are aware of the boss of Baroque's Works, uh, Crocodile, another warlord of the sea, and we know how strong the last one was. So now they're actually on the run as things start to like spice up and get really dangerous by this like cowboy bounty looking woman who uh, took out an entire ship by herself, I think. That's pretty rough. Like we've seen that happen before and it was not pleasant. And then she just teleports onto the boat. Miss All Sunday is just able to like lift people up. She's able to like levitate stuff. I think they have their own fruit ability too. And so Sunday gives them a weird paradigm. Either go to Alabasta with an eternal log post, which always points in the same direction, which explains how they moved backwards in the Grand Line. 
or just take your own log post and head up to Little Garden, which has been described as like this very dangerous location, which Vivi and Sunday kind of suggest that it would be safer just to head to Alabasta. But either way, Luffy just decides on taking their own route and heading straight to Little Garden. We have built up so many loose ends in Whiskey Peaks now. We're, we're aware of Baroque Works and Sunday and Crocodile, both very threatening by the sounds and looks of it, as well as uh, Alabasta, this kingdom in conflict, and the dangerous island, which we'll visit next time, Little Garden.